everyone welcome back to my channel and in this video I am going to tell you how you can generate SQL queries using Azure Open AI so I have already created few videos earlier but the difference between those videos and this video is I'm not going to use Langchain in this particular video so we will be writing a few lines of code we'll try to connect to um, Azure Open AI so the bare minimum libraries we need is the ones which we need for connecting to Azure Open AI and another one is to make a post call. So apart from these two, we are not going to pull in any extra packages or libraries. So before I get started with this, let me quickly point you to my earlier videos which I created for SQL Server. So these are the two videos which I have created. So let's say if you are a Langchain fan and you are still interested in using Langchain, then I would recommend you to watch these first two videos. In my this video, I'm uh, explaining how you can generate queries for uh, Azure SQL DB using natural language. And it's a very simple example, but let's say if you have a complex scenarios where you need to define some templates or anything, then this would be your video. So, but again, if you don't want to go for line chain, then my today's video is the one which can help you with that. So let me quickly get started with the most uh, interesting thing. So I have already created a SQL database in Azure. So let me quickly point you to that. So this is my database and this is my query editor. Let me log in and show you what all tables I have. So I have created total four tables. The one which is here you can see is the course. Then we need a department. We have movies and series and the student. So among these four tables, the movies and the series one is completely separate, but rest three, the course, department and the student, these tables are interrelated. So what I'm doing here is if you will look at the course table here, we have course ID, course name and the department ID. Then in department, you have department ID and the department name. So by looking at these two tables, you can see that uh, the course and the department ID, uh, department tables are related using the department ID. It means every course is associated to certain department. So here in the department table, my department department ID is the primary key, whereas in the course it is referenced as a foreign key. Here you can see. And the third table I am having here is the student. So in this we have student ID, student name and the course ID. So course ID will tell you that given student is involved in uh, which particular course. So let's say if you want to query something like uh, for so and so student, I want to know which course he is involved in and which course that department belongs to. So these are the kind of queries which I am going to show you today. And of course, this requires join and other complex operations whenever we want to get a result. So let's focus on these three tables. And apart from that, once you have this database ready, next thing we need is the Azure OpenAI instance. So for that, I have already created one. If you have not created one, I can quickly show you. Uh, because I have received a lot many requests that how did I get started with it and how to create an instance. So what you can do is you can search for Azure OpenAI click on create and here you need to furnish all the required details in order to create this particular instance and once this is created you will be see uh, that particular instance listed over here so let me quickly show you this one so once you have this instance created you can click on go to Azure OpenAI Studio because this is the place which will let us uh, create our deployment model so I'm going to give it a few seconds. So here you can see on the left hand side you have the deployment step. So click on that and here you can click on deploy model. So as we are going to use the pre-trained model which is pre-existing. So we will click on deploy base model. And here you can select in which model do you want. Click on confirm and it will go ahead and deploy a model for you. So in my case I have already done it. So I'm not going to repeat the same thing again. Now we have everything ready. Let's go and have a look at the few lines of code. So the very bare minimum things like I said, which I installed is just these three. So we need requests because we want to make an API call. Then these two are for authentication purpose. So in this video, I'm not going with the API 
or the key based authentication rather I will be using the default Azure credentials. So let's start by importing the request then here we have to import the Azure default credential and the get bearer a token provider from Azure identity and here I have supplied my endpoint and I'm fetching the default Azure credential. If you don't know what this Azure credential is, I would recommend you to check out my earlier videos in which I have explained like what are this credential and how these are fetched or what are this uh, different ways we can get this particular thing over here. Then here I'm generating the token by with this scope. And once I have this token, I'm constructing a header header. So in header, I'm saying what is the type of data, which is JSON in our case. And here I am supplying the authorization token. Now next comes the prompt. So in this prompt, what I'm doing is I'm saying generate a SQL query to get courses and their respective departments. So this is the uh, query or the prompt which I have given. And here I'm defining all the tables which are present in my database so you must have seen there were four tables but like I said I'm interested only in these three tables so I just mentioned the schema of those table along with the correct column name and the table name so make sure that you have this thing very correctly defined so this is the only thing which I'm giving in my prompt next thing is I'm constructing the messages or the payload part so in messages I'm defining the role so the very first role is the system wherein I'm saying that what kind of assistant it is and what all things it can do for me then I have the user role. So user role again, it's a type of text because we are dealing with just text and not images. So make sure that you're defining the text over here and the prompt what, which is like the user query. And here I'm seeing the max token. Now if I will go ahead and execute the cell, it's going to take a few seconds and we'll get the things ready for us. Okay, now in this particular cell, what I'm doing is I'm making a post request and simply printing the response. So let's do this one. And here you can see the queries ready. So select course dot course name, department or department name from course. And then it is joining department on course dot department ID and the department dot department ID. Let me quickly tell you my query again. So this was my prompt. I was saying, get me all the courses and their respective departments. So this is the beautiful query which was generated. So let's quickly grab this from here and try to execute it, whether it's actually working or not. So I'm going to take this query. I will go back to my database. Let's go to this one and Query, a query editor. I will quickly log in and here if I'm pasting that query, so of course I need to remove this slash and new line character from here because it's not going to work. And if you're planning to reuse this thing in your further steps, let's say you want to extract or grab the data from the SQL server, then make sure to perform this cleanup at least. So if I will go ahead and execute this here, you can see that it has beautifully listed the course name and its respective department name. So this is how easy it is uh, to get your query constructed using Azure OpenAI. And if you will look at this code, we are not doing anything busy or anything advanced except this particular prompt. So make sure that you are defining your prompt very carefully and the very, uh, interesting part about this thing is if your database is small if you're having less number of tables then this solution could be the best for you now the question arises here is what if i'm having lot many tables what if i'm having lot many columns so of course in that case we cannot go ahead and define all those hundred tables or the columns over here because it is going to increase the length of my uh, this prompt uh, which we don't want because with every query is we if we are passing this much huge prompt let's say 50 lines or 100 lines then I don't think it's a very effective solution for any chatbot so how to solve this problem how to overcome this particular scenario wherein we want to query a very complex tip uh, 
complex and the multiple number of tables in one shot so in that case there is a very good trick so if you want to know that trick stay tuned for my next video and in my next video we will see how can we overcome this particular disadvantage how can we get rid of this long huge prompt specifically in the case of multiple tables or lot many columns in our tables so stay tuned for my next video and i will reveal this particular secret on how to reduce the size of the prompts for your databases till then stay tuned thank you